Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. With the midterm elections less than two months away, there's a lot at stake, not only for our nation, but for our community. So we asked the good pastor, Reverend Dr. Jamal Bryant, yes. to join us at the table to talk about getting out the vote this November. Pastor Bryant, thank you so much for staying with us today. Yes. Thank you for yes. having me. Yes, yes. absolutely. Pastor, I'm just so glad that you're here so that we can get into this, this topic. All right. So <coughs> during the conference, Reverend Jesse Jackson said the best way to even the political playing field is at the ballot box. Now, in your opinion, why is it so difficult to get minorities out to vote? Mm. Uh, particularly for this generation, what nobody is dealing with <coughs> is that we've not seen a win. Uh, mm -hmm. When you were considered, nothing happened in the Trayvon Martin case, in the Michael Brown case, mm -hmm. in the Freddie Gray case. So the previous generation saw the integration <coughs> of water fountains and buses and houses. But this generation is saying we have no evidence mm -hmm. that the democratic process works. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're going to have to do something to show that there is a cause and effect. But what we can see, and what I've been saying, is not voting <coughs> is what elected Trump. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Trump wasn't Absolutely. elected by the number of people who voted, but by the number of people who didn't vote. Oh, my goodness, yeah. my goodness. And of course, we've seen rallies and marches. However, uh, this particular conference, uh, church leaders traveled to Capitol Hill to meet with senators and representatives. What actually came out of those conversations? We brought uh, about 1,500 pastors from around the country uh, so that the church wouldn't be seen on the sidelines. What is amazing about Black Lives Matter as a footnote is that this is the very <coughs> first civil rights movement in America for black people not led by a religious figure. Mm. Uh, so the church is no law, nowhere in the conversation, in the dialogue, on the forefront, and so we've shifted from the front line to the side. Well, what was the disconnect? What, what happened to the black church and activism? What That's happened? That's true. Yeah. It is that when you saw the surge of mega churches, okay. we moved to minor impact. Oh, so we my got gosh. all of these buildings, but we had no agenda, and they had no platform. We were just glad to build fellowships and have lapel pins and be able to preach in coliseums, but we weren't speaking to social justice. Oh. Uh, and so you have the largest number of young black people who say they believe in God, but don't believe in church. Yes. Oh uh, yes. So they, they pray. I hear they that win all a the Jesus time. piece. Yes. Uh, but they are not assigned to anybody's church because they don't see where it's active in their lives. Ooh, wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that is a very mm -hmm. good point and a revelation yes, beyond it is. belief. Because so many young people that I talk to, that's it's it's that. I love the Lord, the Lord is in my heart, right. but I don't like church. Yes. Mm -hmm. They don't like it. And, and, and I've visited plenty of, you know, a lot of different churches, and some of them I don't like either. Yeah. yeah. So what do we have to do to change the narrative of the black church? It is that the black church is stuck in a time machine. <laughs> Uh, of what do you do um, to say that I love God and have tattoos doesn't mean I'm not saved. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, because I've got piercings, yeah. uh, it doesn't mean that I'm outside of fellowship. Right. I uh, had a funeral for a big drug deal in my city at my church, and uh, there was a commotion at the back door because my ushers wouldn't let some people in. Mm -hmm. I left the pulpit uh, because it was such a ruckus to figure out what was happening, and the usher was arguing forthrightly, y'all can't come in here because y'all got hats on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I said to the usher, this may be the only time I can right. get them yes. to church. Right. Mm -hmm. What's more important, their hat or their heart? Yes, their if heart. I can change yeah. their heart, they'll throw away the hat. Right. Uh, and true. I think some of those values have got to be readjusted <laughs> for us to become relevant. Yes. Yes. People yes. so focused on that traditional. Yeah, that's right. yes. Right. Yes. But now, you know, we are starting to see a shift in the candidates that we're seeing. You know, yes. both political parties, you know, we've been seeing, you know, and we can make history with the, with the minority and female candidates that mm -hmm. we're seeing. Why do you think that shift is happening? Well, one of the things that's being ignored by the Democratic and the Republican Party is both in 2008 and 2012, the largest voting constituency was black women. Mm -hmm. uh, black women single-handedly mm -hmm. delivered Barack Obama. Oh, no, no, mm -hmm. uh, and so we've got to realize how do we then funnel that energy uh, to not just vote at the top, but in our local elections, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the city council, in terms of state's attorney, all of those are important. And so we've got to vote all the way down the ticket, right. but it's not happening because we're not doing appropriate education. Mm -hmm. yes. They are our voices. They are our voices. Yeah. Well, so, no, go ahead, no, 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 Selena. No. 
No, no, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, go, let's go to talk a little bit about you on Capitol Hill. You ran yes. into Meek Mills, yes. and you know he's been talking a lot about prison reform. Uh, are you looking to work with working with him in the future? Yes. Uh, what, he, what, what's the plan there? He's uh, coming to Baltimore to mm -hmm. shoot a movie, mm -hmm. uh, and so we're going to sit down and talk while he's there to talk about what do we do because most conversations about prison reform are for those who are already there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you're going to talk about prison reform, you've got to talk about job training. Yes. Uh, you've got to talk about education when 56 percent of black men are dropping out before the 11th grade. Yeah. So what do we do about GED? What do we do about home ownership? Mm -hmm. uh, and so we've got to do some things when you will consider quad that they are gauging prison beds by fifth and sixth grade oh, yes, on how yes. many people are in special education mm -hmm. and medication mm -hmm. to use that as a trajectory as to what the prisons are going to look like. My God, oh, my, my God. goodness. Really quickly, what are three things that we can do or people can do in their community <clears throat> to, to enact change? Uh, before I was a pastor, I was national youth director of the NAACP. Uh, and we built it on three prongs. One is voter education. Mm -hmm. What are the issues that we're voting around? Yes. Not personalities, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but principles. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Because if we have the principle, we can exchange the personality. Absolutely. We've got to mature to know that everybody who's our color is not our kind. That's, That's right. right. That's good. Yeah, just that because so they're true. black My doesn't God. mean they have a black yeah. agenda. Absolutely. Right. So true. voter education. The second is voter registration. Mm -hmm. uh, what are we doing in our local precincts uh, for people to be able to get out to vote. We make sure they're old enough to get Newports right. at the corner store, mm -hmm. but are you old enough to register to vote? And the last is voter, get out the vote. Mm -hmm. Use all of these church vans that only work on Sundays mm -hmm. uh, and use them for the election day. We've got 47 days left yes. and all of our churches need to be mobilized to do that. That's mm -hmm. right. Well, hopefully it will start with you and we thank, thank you so much. Thank you for thank having you. me. So thank you so much for joining us yes. today. My thank goodness. You. And continue to speak truth to power. For more information on Pastor Bryant's ministry and mission, follow him on Instagram at Jamal H. Bryant. Thank <laughs> you.